This video was created by Vinyl Lake Puma of Vinyl Lake Puma Gaming. So Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel have your typical white, green, blue, purple, legendary, and E-Tech and Pearlescent in the case of Borderlands 2, and either Glitch or Seraph Rarity in Borderlands the pre-sequel or Borderlands 2 respectively. Uh, what some of you may not be familiar with is that there are rarities beyond Glitch and Seraph Rarity from both games. Now, while most of these rarities are similar to conventional rarities from both Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel, well, there are a couple that are cosmetically different or can't appear in one game or the other. Uh, the cosmetically different rarities or the ones that can't appear in either game uh, are what we will mostly be going over here. Now before we get into the top 5 hidden weapon and gear rarities in Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel, I want to go ahead and mention that this video wouldn't have been possible without Steam user Magic Gonad's guide on rarity for Borderlands the pre-sequel and Borderlands 2. Uh, I will leave a link to his Steam guides and his YouTube channel in the description so you can check those out. Without further ado, top 5 hidden weapon and gear rarities in Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel starting now. Number 5. Pearlescent and E-Tech Rarity in Borderlands the Pre-Sequel. Now, alright guys, I know some people on the one hand may get upset that I included these, as both are weapon and gear rarities we've already encountered in Borderlands 2. However, in Borderlands the Pre-Sequel, there are no weapons or gear pieces that are of E-Tech or Pearlescent Rarity that occur naturally or legitimately. Uh, Pearlescent Rarity weapons in the Pre-Sequel are created by by placing a glitch accessory on a modded weapon and achieving a specific ratio between the barrel and the weapon body that makes it appear below conventional glitch rarity. Now, E-Tech weapons are created by achieving a ratio that's less than that of your typical legendary weapons in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Uh, the same goes for Borderlands 2 in case you're interested. It's also worth mentioning that E-Tech Rarity has inferior stats to conventional purple and legendary rarity weapons in Borderlands the pre-sequel, and that's not that bizarre considering that E-Tech weapons in Borderlands 2 are kinda bad and could probably use a buff of some sort. Number 4, Pale aka Ozkit Rarity. As you can tell from the name, this rarity shares its appearance with Ozkits in Borderlands the pre-sequel, and while it looks slightly similar to conventional blue rarity weapons, it's definitely not a blue rarity weapon. Uh, it's a much lighter and less saturated tint of blue than your more conventional blue rarity. Uh, just like with pearlescent weapons in Borderlands the pre-sequel, Pale Rarity is only possible with weapons that have a glitch accessory in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Uh, you also need to achieve a specific barrel to weapon body ratio that's higher than both the pearlescent and conventional glitch rarity in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Now, it is also worth mentioning that Pale Rarity isn't possible in Borderlands 2 as Oz kits were first introduced in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Now, Pale is somewhat exotic looking in my opinion, however, it's not the most exotic or, in my opinion, the coolest looking rarity added by Borderlands the pre-sequel's Claptastic Voyage DLC. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, there is another that I will go over later on in this particular video. Number 3. Black Rarity. It's possible that many of you are already familiar with Black Rarity type weapons and gear. Uh, Black Rarity weapons can appear in both Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel and have a black display text and a black kind of like quote unquote beam uh, when viewed on the ground. Unlike the other Rarity types from both games, Black Rarity items don't have a visible aura when viewed in the player's inventory. Uh, Black Rarity weapons are possible with virtually every weapon barrel from both games. However, it should be mentioned that Seraph weapon barrels or glitch accessories create an entirely new set of weapon rarity types for both Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel. So you actually can't have a Black Rarity weapon with a Seraph barrel or a glitch accessory. 
uh, Black Rarity was pretty much the only hidden weapon rarity possible until Seraph and Glitch accessories were introduced in both Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel respectively. Uh, and if you have no DLC for both games, Black Rarity for Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel and E-Tech Rarity in the pre-sequel are the only hidden rarities uh, that you can create. Number 2. Gold aka Limescent. It's also possible that very few of you might be familiar with gold or limescent rarity from Borderlands 2 and to a lesser extent Borderlands the pre-sequel. Uh, this rarity is just below pearlescent in terms of how it appears in your character's inventory. And limescent also requires a specific ratio between the weapon barrel and weapon body in order for it to appear that's lower than the ratio required for pearlescent weapons. Uh, limescent is only possible on weapons with Seraph Rarity Barrels, meaning that you will need DLC for Borderlands 2 in order to create it. Uh, for Borderlands, the pre-sequel, it's pretty much the same thing. You will need to have glitch accessories on the gun, similar to how you need a glitch accessory for both pearlescent and pale rarity weapons. It's also worth mentioning that gold rarity appears much like the standard in-game currency does when it is dropped on the ground. Uh, and the Borderlands 2 modding community at one time called this limescent, as the text has this bizarre yellowish, like, green color. Uh, limescent is pretty exotic looking in my opinion. However, I think the next entry is the coolest of the hidden rarity types. And finally, number one, mint, aka Moonstone Rarity. The Mint Rarity shares its appearance with the Moonstone currency available to the player in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Now, like Pale, Limescent, and Pearlescent weapons, Mint Rarity is only possible on weapons with a glitch accessory in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Uh, and like Pale Rarity, it is not possible in Borderlands 2, as Moonstone was first introduced in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Now, the Mint Rarity is really exotic looking in my opinion, and I think it's the best looking rarity from Borderlands the pre-sequel. Uh, Mint Rarity weapons are a higher tier rarity than both Pearlescent and your conventional Glitch Rarity weapons, however, they are a lower tier rarity than Pale Rarity weapons. It's also worth mentioning that Pale Rarity weapons tend to have superior stats to Mint Rarity weapons as well, and honestly, this is kind of a shame because I think that the Mint Rarity looks a lot better than the Pale Rarity. Anyway guys, that's gonna pretty much wrap up this particular video. Uh, let me know which your favorite of the rarities that we showcased here uh, that you liked, or if you like some of the ultra rarities uh, that are featured in Magic Gonads uh, code lists for Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel. Let me know which one's your favorite. Otherwise, if you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. Take care, and I'll see y'all next time.